The church is supposed to direct the government. The government is not supposed to direct the church. I believe that scripture, the Bible is <clears throat> very clear that, that God is the one that raises up those in authority. He raised up each of you, all of us. And, and I believe that God has ordained and allowed each one of us to be brought here for this specific moment in this time. And this threat to democracy has made its way to Congress. My colleague, Representative Loan Boebert, said, quote, the church is supposed to direct the government. The government is not supposed to direct the church. I'm tired of this separation of church and state junk, end quote. J junk being the Constitution and Bill of Rights. <laughs> got him. We fucking got him. Okay, so we have a new speaker, everyone. And right from the get-go, he's combating gun violence with thoughts and prayers. This is a, this is a dark time in America. We have a, a, a lot of problems, and we're really, really hopeful and prayerful. Prayer is appropriate in a time like this. And discussing God as the reason for him being chosen to be speaker, you know, ignoring the fact that there was about 65 other fellows considered before him, but sure. This is my belief. I believe that each one of us has a huge responsibility today to use the gifts that God has given us to serve the extraordinary people of this great country, and they deserve it. Yeah, meanwhile, here's who Mike Johnson really is. He gave a phenomenal speech yesterday. I loved when he said, I believe scripture and the Bible's clear. God is the one that raised up each of you. But if you aren't familiar with this specific election denier, I want to bring to your attention two videos. One is comments that he has made on church and state in the past. Comments that echo the likes of Marjorie Taylor Greene and Lauren Bober. What, what's happened, Alex, over the last 60, 70 years is that our generation has been convinced that there's a separation of church and state, right? You heard that term all the time. And most people think that that's part of the Constitution. It's opposite. It's the opposite of how we were founded as a country. And I'm telling you, we're losing those foundations at our peril. That is not how our founding fathers intended it. And followed up by this powerful speech from fast rising Democratic star Maxwell Frost. Now, Frost's scathing takedown comes at a hearing on religious freedom in which he cited the comments of those certain GOP members that are a direct antithesis of what is not only fundamental to the Constitution and Bill of Rights regarding separation of church and state, but the Bible itself. And this threat to democracy has made its way to Congress. I mean, my colleague, Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene, has said, quote, Christian Christian nationalism is actually a good thing. It is an identity that Republicans need to embrace. And I am being attacked by the godless left because I said I am a proud Christian nationalist, end quote. My colleague, Representative Lowen Boebert, said, quote, the church is supposed to direct the government. The government is not supposed to direct the church. I'm tired of this separation of church and state junk, end quote, J junk being the Constitution and Bill of Rights. The Bible itself in 2 Corinthians actually warns us against this. Paul warned against this. He warned us against people who would preach of a Christ that differs from the true Christ that we learn about in the Bible. That's exactly what Christian nationalism is doing. I condemn religious extremism everywhere, globally and domestically. We have to recognize the threat it po poses to our most sacred freedoms and root it out everywhere. And I think it's incumbent, especially upon us uh, as Christians, and me, and me as a Christian, to be at the forefront of the fight to ensure that white nationalism and Christian nationalism doesn't see the light of day. Thank you, and I yield back. Now, should we be at all surprised that such members have an issue grappling with the terminology and warnings outlined in the Bible? No, because the man they worship, a self-described God-fearing cult leader who, when asked what his favorite Bible verse was, sounded like that one kid in class who didn't do the reading but gets called out to answer. And then, okay. You mentioned the Bible, you've been talking about how it's your favorite book, and you said, I think last night in Iowa, some people are surprised that you say that. I'm wondering what one or two of your most favored Bible uh, verses are well, I, I wouldn't want to get into it because to me that's very personal. You know, when I talk about the Bible, it's very personal. So I don't want to get into there's verses. No, there's I don't no want to get into. It. There's no, no I, verse I, that means I a just, lot to you that you think about or cite. I, the, the Bible means a lot to me, but I don't want to get into specifics. Even to cite a verse that no, you like. No, I don't want to do that. You're I mean, an Old Testament guy or a New Testament guy? Uh, probably equal. I think it's just an incredible. The whole Bible is an incredible. I joke. Uh, very much so. They always hold up the art of the deal. I say my second favorite book of all time. Now, I think it's worth noting that I, like Frost mentioned here, am a Christian myself and understand the positive role that religion can play in one's life. But I also understand how harmful it can be when wielded like a stick of bigotry to demonize and vilify other groups of people. Or like members of the GOP here continue to do when it's forced upon people as a way in which they should live their life. He supports abortion bans without limitations, is opposed to LGBTQ 
rights and believes the FBI discriminates against conservatives. Roe v. Wade gave constitutional cover to the elective killing of unborn children in America, period. You think about the implications of that on the economy. We're all struggling here to, to cover the bases of Social Security and Medicare and Medicaid and all the rest. If we had all those able-bodied workers in the economy, we wouldn't be going upside down and toppling over like this. Listen, the gentleman I, I will not yield. I will not. Roe was a terrible corruption of America's constitutional jurisprudence. I oppose religious extremism of all forms. And I think it's so vitally important for members like Frost and Garcia, who are proud religious members, call out those members who claim to be people of faith, but are the most bigoted and intolerant. Taylor, I do have a couple quick questions for you. Since we're talking so much about religious freedom and the ability and, and, and to ensure that folks have the ability to say and, and, and feel free to, to worship as, as they, as they um, would like to, do you think it advances the cause of religious freedom for a member of Congress to claim that the Catholic Church, of which I'm a member of, is controlled by Satan? Um, I, I think that kind of rhetoric really uh, is, is a threat to religious freedom. I think we have to understand that words matter, and it's particularly concerning when it comes from a member of government. I think one of the protections that we have in the United States, and again, we are the envy of the world in many ways, and the legal protections we have for religious freedom Absolutely. is that our government stays neutral and, when it comes to religion. And what about um, saying that the this, this same member said that Catholic bishops are destroying the United States by advocating for policies uh, that support migrants uh, and refugees. That Catholic bishops are doing that, by the way, destroying the United States by advocating for policies to support migrants. Um, how, how do you think that advances the causes of religious freedom? Well, again, I, I think we have to be cognizant that words matter and that rhetoric can threaten religious freedom in ways that can lead, again, as we saw, can lead to violence in other, in Thank other you. places. And, and those comments were actually made by a member of this broader committee, of the Oversight Committee, which I think are, are, are obviously um, repulsive comments. I mean, it's funny to hear Marge play victim over her faith when I remember she had no issue demonizing Islam as she harassed AOC, who was raised Catholic, by the way, not Muslim, outside of her office. They signed it, they swore in on the Korean. Oh, we have the Bible. We're gonna talk about swearing in on the oath, how to swear in on the Bible mm -hmm. with them mm -hmm. and let them know what our law says, yes. that you can't swear in on the Korean. So we're gonna, we're gonna explain that. You know, we're gonna explain about how you can't swear in on the Korean and we're yeah. gonna have the Bible and ask them if they would swear in on the Bible, mm -hmm. that we really need we them. We have the oath. Yeah, we have the oath, yep. I assure yeah. law is not compatible with, with America. Yep. That's the bottom line. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, I'm an American citizen. I pay your salary through the taxes that you collect from me through the IRS. I'm a woman, I'm a female business owner, and I'm proud to be an American woman. And I do not support your socialist policy. But the thing is, when their cult leader stands in front of a cheering crowd and says things like this. To the United States, I don't think a lot of good things are going to happen. And I will implement strong ideological screening of all immigrants. If you hate America, if you want to abolish Israel, if you don't like our religion. Day one, I will immediately restore and expand the Trump travel ban. Remember when they said, oh, that's so vicious. What else do you expect? <laughs> Hey Midas Mighty, love this report? Continue the conversation by following us on Instagram, at Midas Touch, to keep up with the most important news of the day. What are you waiting for? Follow us now.